Good morning. We're on the road to Sarajevo today. Very exciting. Um, not sure how the border crossing is going to go. That's probably the thing I'm most stressed about. Well, that and parking. Those are the two things that always give me stress. <laughs> but it should be a pretty scenic drive. Got a few stops along the way. Yep. We'll see you there. It's a long five-hour drive from Split to Sarajevo, but there are a lot of things you can do along the way. We had fun exploring the countryside of Bosnia and Herzegovina, and if you're heading in the same direction, we definitely recommend taking your time to stop and enjoy the views. So where are we? At a rest stop. Yeah? What do you think about this place? Pretty amazing view. Oh yeah? Should we check it out? Yeah. Yeah, you might be right. This is a pretty good stop, huh? Yeah. We're Karin and Jeremy, an average couple with average jobs and limited vacation time. When we take trips, we have one or two weeks, three if we're lucky, and we want to see and do as much as possible when we travel. Join us as we maximize our vacation time on Mapping It. Well, we were on our way to our next destination and ran into a little bit of a roadblock. Yeah, kind of literally a roadblock. The road was literally closed. Google Maps took us to a border crossing with Bosnia that appears to be closed, so we had to turn around and then we got stopped by the Croatian Border Patrol and they looked a little confused, like, what are you even doing here in the first place? <laughs> so now we're backtracking back to the expressway to try and find a more official, legitimate border crossing. Yeah, let's hope this goes better. We made it into Bosnia! Woohoo! And we had no problems at border crossing. Let's go see some sights. We've made it to the first official stop on today's road trip. We are at the Kravica Waterfall in Bosnia and Herzegovina. And this waterfall is about 26 to 28 meters tall and 120 meters wide at its widest. And it looks really exciting. What do you think? Yeah, let's go check it out a little closer. Yeah, let's go see what it looks like. Oh my gosh. <laughs> ah. This is just magical. It really is. Oh man. This might even beat Cleet Pizza. Yeah, this this is like a fairyland. <laughs> this is ridiculous. And and you can swim here. We were not prepared. No, I did not know we could swim. This is ridiculous. I know. I wish I could jump in the water. Uh, I know, I'm so hot already. <laughs> the sun is beaming down on us right now. It's ridiculous. So hot. The water looks incredibly refreshing. I wish we had time to put on our swimsuits. <laughs> this looks wonderful. What do you think? It's magical. Yeah, maybe we should uh, cancel our plans for the day. That'd be great. <laughs> not very possible. Yeah, probably not likely. But we... that would be the best plan. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it looks so refreshing. I just want to jump in. Yeah. OK, 
Okay, so the waterfall is incredible. It was 40 Bosnian marks per person to get in, which is about 21 US dollars. And in my research, I thought it was similar to Plate Vitsa, where you just walk around and you explore and you hike and stuff. But it seems like the number one thing to do here is swimming. And if I had known that, we would be swimming right now. <laughs> yeah, we could certainly use it. Yeah, it's very hot, very humid right now. And a dip in the water sounds so refreshing. But I don't think we have time for that. Nope. Too much to do. Yeah, so. Let's get to it. We're on to our next stop. It was an easy 25 minute drive to our next stop in Southern Bosnia. We made it to the town of Pochetel and it's right near the Naretva River. And it has a cool looking hammam, which is right over there, which is a bathhouse. And it has a, uh, a mosque right up there. And it has like a fortress with ruins kind of right behind you. And I mean, it's very hot out. So we'll see how much of this we get to explore before we're just dead tired. <laughs> but it looks pretty cool. So let's go check it out. We are inside the mosque. It was built in 1563. And outside of it, there is a cypress tree that was planted by the Ottomans. And it's even older than the mosque. This mosque was fully flattened during the war in 1993. And it was rebuilt by the government in 2002. There are some pieces of it that are original and some that are reproductions very cool to see and learn about the history of this place. There are photos on the wall showing the mosque at various points throughout history, including several that showed damage from the war in the 90s. What do you think? It's pretty cool. The mosque and the town have been beautifully restored after the war and now represent great examples of Ottoman architecture. These are pieces of the original mosque that were unable to be put back in the restoration after its destruction in 1993. After exploring the mosque, we hiked up the hill to get a better view of the town. Pochatel is a beautiful place and absolutely worth a stop on your Bosnian road trip. It's quite the climb if you want to come here. Yeah, we, uh, what, we're maybe like two thirds of the way to the top and I think we're probably going to call it quits. <laughs> Yeah, the view from here is pretty darn good, so I think this is this is as far as we go. Yeah, it's uh, it's ridiculously hot today, and we didn't bring enough water because we've been guzzling it because it is so hot. And we also don't have the right currency yet, so we can't really buy much. Yeah, we have not been to an ATM yet, so we don't have any Bosnian marks. We only have Kuna. We have a few euros, but they're all in the car, so we didn't bring anything useful with us. Yeah, just credit cards. <laughs> yeah, just credit cards, and in a small town like this, they don't take that. <laughs> One more cool thing is that the river behind us, the Naretva River, is uh, the same river that runs through Mostar. So we get a sneak preview of what the color is. It, it's gorgeous. After enjoying the views, we hopped back in our car and made a beeline directly for lunch. When we heard about the regional specialty, we knew we had to try it. Well, we made it to a restaurant Kovacevic for lunch for some spit roasted lamb. That sounds pretty tasty. Are you excited? Yeah, we even have a view. Yeah, the view is incredible. I mean, I feel like it's a shame not to dig into this. No, I think you have to try the bread with the cheese first. Okay. This is their homemade bread. And this is their fresh, I believe it's cottage cheese, similar to other parts of this region. 
Oh my gosh. <laughs> mm. It's good, right? It's so good. It has the the texture of like a whipped cream cheese, but the flavor of a good cottage cheese. Mm, it's so fresh. Let me you dig try it. to like. Yeah, I'm gonna dig in. Pull apart, tender, super juicy. Mmm. Uh, mmm. Mmm. Oh my gosh. So good. The skin is crunchy. Perfect. Juicy, tender meat. Amazing flavor. Mmm. I'm gonna try the potatoes next. Because the potatoes yesterday were incredible. Mm. Very good potatoes, too. Not as good as yesterday, but pretty darn close. This is very good. Lamb is amazing. I think the second best thing is this cheese that we got. <laughs> What's your favorite part of the lamb? Mm. Definitely part with the crispy skin. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, and we both got a single portion with the side of potatoes, which seems to be the better economical and amount of food choice because we could have gotten a kilo of lamb, which would have been way too much and probably enough for three, three people instead of two. So. so we made a good choice. Yeah. yeah. Perfect for a lunch sized portion. Yum. We are so full from lunch. It was incredible. It came out to 50 Bosnian marks, which is about $26, $27 roughly. So, pretty good price. Good value. Yeah. And now we are heading to Sarajevo, the capital of Bosnia and Herzegovina. And we're going to have one night there, which is obviously not enough. <laughs> but we wanted to get a taste of what it was like. So let's, let's head over. Well, we made it to Sarajevo, and now we're heading on a walking tour with Nino and friends. <laughs> we'll leave a link in the description below. Everybody describes Sarajevo as Jerusalem of the West, a small place with a lot of different religious temples. But that's how kind of the city began. Uh, we have 350,000 citizens in Sarajevo, and we have basically Today, 85% Bosniaks or Muslims. We have only 3% Orthodox Christians or Serbs, and we have 5% Catholics or uh, Croats. So it's kind of nice that numbers are changed, definitely, but everyone kind of has equal equal voice. So you pretty much have, we are very lucky. We have so many holidays because every religious holiday is like a national holiday. So you have two Christmases, two Easter's and two Muslim holidays. Uh, the secret is we're not that religious, but we don't like to work all the time. So. <laughs> This walking tour took us all over the city and gave a great overview of Sarajevo's history. We just learned that one of the best things that the Austro-Hungarian Empire did for Bosnia is bring the Latin alphabet with them. Before that, they were using the Arabic alphabet. The Latin alphabet had more books and literature associated to it than the Arabic alphabet at the time, and this allowed more people to learn to read. Sarajevo has a long and interesting history, but many people know Sarajevo as the place where Archduke Franz Ferdinand, heir to the Austro-Hungarian Empire, was shot in 1914, which was the spark that started World War I. So, a very infamous place would be this bridge. This is Latin Bridge. Everybody knows this as a place where Franz Ferdinand was assassinated. It did not really happen on the bridge itself. It happened where you see the pink building, the museum sign. 
under that basically street corner where you see a lot of people gathering. That is where a young man, uh, um, the assassin, Dadolo Prinzip, was standing when he shot and killed Franz Ferdinand. We're walking across the Latin Bridge. This is where Franz Ferdinand was assassinated and is the shot heard around the world that started World War I. We just visited the oldest brewery in the town and it's interesting because it was built by the Ottomans back in 1864. It's even older than the church next door that was built by the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Also, the beer factory is one of a few vital resources that remained open during the entire siege of Sarajevo and provided fresh drinking water to citizens that were cut off from it. We just finished our walking tour of Sarajevo and we are in the old town and we're going to have chivapi for dinner. We've come to a chivapchenitsa and we're waiting for our food to arrive and hopefully it'll be very good. Well, we got our chivapi. It's a, a sausage made with lamb and beef, often served with onions and in a flatbread called some. Let's try it. Very good. Like a very well seasoned sausage, but because it's lamb, it's so much better than what we have usually. <laughs> onions are cumbersome to deal with. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Very good. Very good. All right, I'm gonna start with just a plain bite of chivabi. Oh my God. So savory, perfectly grilled and seasoned. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Makes me so happy. I'm gonna try it with the bread and onions now. It's got like, light fluffy texture inside. Here we go. <laughs> There's onions in there, I promise. <laughs> mm. <sighs> mm. I love onions. This is incredible. 10 out of 10 would recommend. <laughs> Ten-year-old me would not have eaten this. There are way too many onions. <laughs> but now... That's very good. After dinner, we wandered around the old town before heading back to our hotel for the night. Well, we got a little bit of Sarajevo left tomorrow and then we're heading to Mostar. Good morning from Sarajevo. We're going to explore the city for a little bit. So this building behind me is the town hall. And when it was built, it used to be a neighborhood. And they asked, or they basically bought all of the houses that used to be there, but, only, but one homeowner didn't want to sell. So he said, you must take down my house and rebuild it on the other side of the river, exactly how it is. And so that's what this building is over here. And it's referred to as the Spite House. <laughs> We're walking through the Bashacharshia, which means old town in Sarajevo. It's a very big difference from what it was last night, <laughs> wouldn't you say? Yeah, not quite so busy. Yeah, nice and calm right now. We're heading to the fountain. Legend has it that if you drink from this fountain, you're said to return to Sarajevo in the future. So you're gonna come back to Sarajevo then? I guess so. Cool, me too. <laughs> they call this Pigeon Square. I wonder why.
Did you have fun? <laughs> yeah, that was pretty fun. <laughs> this is the Ghazi Husserf Bey Mosque, built in the 16th century. Ghazi Husserf Bey was a rich Bosnian aristocrat who donated a lot of money to build a lot of the buildings in this city. Oh. Um, Did you know that the uh, walls are six feet thick? <laughs> I know that now. Oh, well now you know. Also, the minaret was used as target practice during the siege of Sar Sarajevo mm -hmm. and um, it was restored in 1996. We're at the meeting of cultures in Sarajevo. Behind us is the eastern half of Sarajevo and it was built mainly by the Ottoman Empire. And if we rotate 180 degrees, now behind us is the western half of Sarajevo and it was built mainly by the Austro-Hungarian Empire and it's quite a difference in architecture. We are at Burek Genitsa Sac and we just ordered some Burek. We're getting the meat Burek and the potato Burek and we're excited to dig in. <laughs> So we got our burek. Yeah, our burek just came. This is the potato burek. So flaky and crumbly. I believe it's a filo dough packed with potatoes, possibly onions as well. So let's dig in. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Good. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Better than the one in Pula. Mm, definitely. 100%. <laughs> so fresh. The potatoes are really nicely cooked. There is a bit of onion in there maybe. Yeah, a little bit of onion. <laughs> the phyllo. Crunchy and soft and flaky. Mm, so savory and delicious. It's wonderful. I got the meat burek. Oh yeah? Yeah. You looking forward to it? Yeah. Have you ever had meat burek no, before? No, this is the first one. Alright. So let's get a good bite. Find something tasty. Yeah. Oh. That is so good. There's definitely a little bit of onion in there as well. Mm. The meat is just seasoned perfectly. Ah. It's so savory. Mm. Is it even better? Mm hmm Yeah, it has a nice freshness to it. Mm. So now that I think about it, the meat almost tastes like the, the meat you would have in a hot dish. And with this like sour cream sauce or yogurt sauce, can't quite tell what it is. Maybe it's both. It's just amazing. Now having tried the meat burek, I agree. It definitely tastes like the meat that you would have in a hot dish. For anyone that doesn't know what a hot dish is, it's what Minnesotans call a casserole. <laughs> Very good. And I'd probably say that the meat burek is probably my favorite of all, of all the bureks we've had. Very good. Mm. Mm. So savory. Mm. Very good, I love it. We just finished our burek, it's very good. We had two bureks and two cokes, and it came out to 1650. Bosnian marks, which is about $8.55 in US dollars. I'd say that's a pretty great deal. <laughs> Angela Juli? No. Yes! <laughs> Brad Pitt! No. Oh my god! Yes, yes, what are we doing? Madame, vanilla, chocolate, pistachio. Vanilla. Vanilla. Small, medium, big. Medium. Okay. La, 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 la. Where are you from? Minnesota. Minnesota. Oh, I love you. My name is Alejandro. Your name? Karen. Karen, you're your. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> 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 
This is Turkish ice cream and it's unlike any I've ever had before. Just watch how sticky and stringy this is. <laughs> what is it, mozzarella or something? <laughs> it's very good though. <laughs> We're on another Sarajevo walking tour, this time focusing on the siege of Sarajevo that happened in the 90s. Somehow, people thought they, that they're safe in this place. I mean, everyone saw all of the buildings around it, so you were thinking, no one can see you, we're all good. I mean, people started to come here just to talk to someone, to meet someone. That's how safe they felt. However, it was just pure luck. Uh, the third year of the siege, 1994, one mortar shell found the way to this place. It very obviously fell down here. This mortar shell killed 67 people and injured 150. This was unheard of by that time. But guess what? The next day, you clean up the best way you can and you move on. That's how you live at that time. It's all about survival. You don't really go emotionally through anything at that time. You just move on. Adrenaline, survive, move on. Only when the war ended, that's when you really realize what happened here. So that is when two memorials were built. This is one called Sarajevo Rose. It's not the only one like this. I would say if you would, like if you will, if you will be walking around the central area of Sarajevo, you will see at least 10 of them. If it looks like a splatter of red paint, it means that a mortar shell fell there and actually killed somebody. Whether it is one person or 40 or 50 or 67, it, you never know. But it always is um, someone's last place. Today, you'll get memorials to remember, to learn something from this. And Rose is special. I kind of like them a lot because you don't really see them very often. When you step on one of them, you know, you, you kind of feel bad for a moment and then you move on with your life. And that's exactly how it's supposed to be. You should never forget the people that happened to them. But you do need to live your life. But it's a, like a silent reminder, which is, I like it a lot. There are many memorials, large and small, throughout Sarajevo that serve as reminders of the tragedies that happened during the war. The siege here lasted three years and eight months, and on an average day they would get hit by 200 shells of mortars. On the worst day in July 1993, they were hit by over 3,000. Wow, that's pretty brutal. Yeah. It's been almost 27 years since the siege ended, and while a lot of the buildings are repaired, there's still visible damage. You'll see a lot of uh, damage that looks like bullets, but it's actually shrapnel from the mortar shells and it takes time like all the glass from the windows was blown out and that was one of their top priorities is replacing all the glass and all the windows and all the buildings and now they're slowly re repairing all the buildings as well so yeah you'll see some damage it just takes time <laughs> don't let the possibility of seeing damaged buildings prevent you from visiting sarajevo chances are if this damage hadn't been pointed out to us we might not have even noticed if you come on this trip, bring lots of water if it's summer, prepare for a lot of walking, and tip your guide. <laughs> so what did you think about the tour? That was really cool. It's cool to hear all the history and all the kind of personal stories and stuff. Um, like there was a post office where someone had graffitied it saying, this is Serbia. And then a day later, someone came back and said, no, this is a post office, you idiot. <laughs> so that's kind of, kind of funny. She puts a personal touch on, on the tour. Yeah. Yeah. So I think after that tour, I have a much better understanding of how the war started. So before, before the war, 
there was this country called Yugoslavia and they were doing pretty well and they had a president for life, Marshal Tito. Some people would call him maybe a dictator, but everyone here just loves him. So he's president for life. And um, then he died in like 1980 because no one lives forever. And then they had maybe not the best run government and it led to a lot of policies that had inflation and people were unsatisfied. Then there was rising nationalism amongst the six nations that made up Yugoslavia. People were unsatisfied with where Yugoslavia was headed. And so Slovenia broke away in 1991, declaring their independence. And then it set off a chain reaction with Croatia going next and um, Macedonia and then Bosnia. And, and when Bosnia declared their independence from Yugoslavia, there was a portion of the population that was actually unhappy with that. They didn't want to leave Yugoslavia and that was the Bosnian Serbs. And so they decided to take action into their own hands and pulled together an army in less than a month. And then they took siege of Sarajevo. They surrounded the city of Sarajevo. And there's also wars in other parts of Bosnia. And um, basically the Bosnian Serbs were attacking everyone else, trying to get some land so that they could create their own country. And it led to a war that lasted three years and eight months. So this part of the walking tour had a lot of kind of difficult or heavy information to deal with. Mm -hmm. So a lot of a lot of death, a lot of war, which is not easy to talk about. So we're gonna take some time to walk back to the old town. Right now it's about a three kilometer walk from where we are and we're gonna just reflect and decompress. Sarajevo has worked hard to rebuild the city after the war. It's a safe and rewarding place to visit filled with so much history. We had a great time on our walking tour and recommend taking the time to learn more about the places you visit. We wish we could spend more time in Sarajevo. One day wasn't enough, but now that we know how much there is to see in this city, we can't wait to go back and explore more in the future. We made it to Mostar and we're gonna go explore. We have no plans tonight other than some tasty, tasty dinner at our hotel. This is the Kriva Chupria. It means crooked bridge. It's smaller than the old bridge. And it was built about 10 years before the old bridge. And they think it was maybe like a practice run because it's in the same style as the old bridge. We're on most stars, starry most. gonna jump off this bridge. people who like to jump off the bridge but they'll only do it if tourists pay them enough money <laughs> so it could take a while while they collect money before they jump so you have to have patience the east side of the river is a great place to see views of starry most when the sun is setting and the bridge is all lit up yeah welcome to our hotel In most of Yeah. Let's go check out the patio. Hopefully we can open the door this time. Slide it now. Not slide it. <laughs> Don't break the door.
As you can see, it's pretty cozy in here. Okay, I can close the door. I think we did it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go check out the bathroom. Rain head shower. And we got a reservation for the restaurant here at the hotel as well. We're at the hotel restaurant and we made a reservation in advance for this special dinner called Such. It's cooked under an iron bell and I got the lamb and Jeremy got the trout. Mm. Oh wow, the lamb is so tender, so well cooked, so juicy, and it's got this delicious cheese on top right here. It's, it's like shredded feta. It's just the most savory burst of flavors in your mouth. It's incredible. I'm gonna dig in with this eggplant spread we've got on. Give that a shot. Mmm even better. So I got the fish. Did you uh, debone your own fish? No. This is <laughs> the first time I've had fish in this form, so. You mean I, whole fish. I did not do it. <laughs> Here we go. Mm. It's so good. It's per cooked perfectly. I got some, I don't know, either chard or spinach along with it, and potatoes. Mm. Very fresh, goes well with the fish. Oh, we got some baklava for dessert. Oh yeah? Let's try it out. Oh man, I don't know how to even cut this. Dig in deep. That's what she said? <laughs> mm. Oh my god. I think that must be the best baklava I've had ever. Oh really? Yeah. That sounds pretty incredible. It's very syrupy, which makes it very sweet. Mm. But yeah, there's so much flavor. So what did you think of dinner tonight? Dinner was great. Yeah. Yeah. It was incredible. Had a little bit of music while we were eating Yeah. from the bar across the way. Uh, it's still going on, and we might hang out and listen to it while we just relax for the night. Yep. Yeah. Got another day in Mostar tomorrow. Mm -hmm. See you then. Yeah, we'll see ya. Good morning from Mostar. We're gonna explore the city today. Yeah. What did we find? Some hedgehogs. <laughs> Was it very surprising? Yes. <laughs> How do you think they got there? No idea. I didn't know that hedgehogs existed here. <laughs> <laughs> They're pretty cute, but also yeah. scary. Yeah. Are we safe to pass? I have no idea. You're already <laughs> halfway there, so I think you might as well go. I guess I'll try. What do you think about the hedgehogs? I think that's probably the most ridiculous thing that's happened on this trip. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> really scared the crap out of me. <laughs> <laughs> you get up early enough. You get you to watch the cleaning crew. Yep. <laughs> Mm 
We're on Starry Most in Mostar. Most means bridge, Starry means old. So this is the old bridge. This bridge is pretty cool. It's built of stone and it survived like two world wars, but then it was completely destroyed in the war in the nineties. And then they had to rebuild it, but you'd never know that it was rebuilt. It yeah. looks pretty old. It looks pretty good. <laughs> City leaders pledged to rebuild the bridge authentically using traditional methods, and it took longer to rebuild the bridge in the 21st century than it did to build the bridge originally in the 16th. How does it feel to have this place all to yourself? Pretty good. It means I can do this. Also, it's very slippery here because we got here right when they were washing the bridge. <laughs> so, like, we have to be very careful. Of doing that? Of doing what I just did. <laughs> Probably shouldn't do that. But otherwise... We have this place to ourselves. No one trying to like get us to give them money to jump off the bridge. No tourists pushing and shoving. Just take our time and enjoy the views and I love it. <laughs> very beautiful inside. Visitors are allowed in. You have to buy a ticket. You're allowed to film here and you can even go up the minaret for amazing views above the city of Mostar. And that's what we're going to do. Follow me. The climb to the top is very narrow, the narrowest we've climbed in all of Europe, and we've climbed to the top of a lot of churches and bell towers, but you can't beat the views you get. It's absolutely worth the effort. That bridge is pretty incredible. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool, especially since it was built in the 1500s by the Ottoman Empire. Mm -hmm. It was the longest single span stone arch bridge at the time. Wow. And uh, it even held up when the Nazis drove over it with tanks during the war, World War II. Wow. That that's how you know it's well constructed. Yeah. The bridge was destroyed in 1993 and the pieces fell into the river. The mortar that was used to hold the bridge together contained a mineral that turned the river red as the pieces fell in. Locals said that it was as if their old friend was bleeding. It took $13 million and three years to rebuild the bridge by an international committee and it reopened in July 2004. The cool thing, or maybe scary thing is a better word for this, is there's no guardrails. And it's very narrow. I wouldn't want to meet someone if I were going up or down. <laughs> yeah, let's hope. Let's go get some breakfast. And now the tour groups have arrived. No, I'm so great. No. We're at Restaurant Divan for breakfast and we got a cheese plate with some Bosnian donuts. Yum! Let's try this donut first. Kind of like a puffy fried dough. dough. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Pretty good? Very good. Kind of like fried bread almost. Oh yeah. A little bit. Very tasty. Mm. Soft on the inside, crispy on the outside. I think we could have it with some of this cheese. I in bet you could. <laughs> mm. 
Well. Oh, is that good? It's very creamy. Yeah. It tastes like a cream cheese. Mmm. That's so good. We are no longer in Mostar. <laughs> it's a brutally hot day. The car claims that it's 39. We're not sure if that's accurate or not, but it certainly feels like it could be 39. For sure. <laughs> so, it's very hot. We left Mostar. We are now in Blagai. And we are heading down to the river because there's something very special to see here. So, let's go check it out. We're at the Turkish Dervish House in Blagai. It's built into the side of the cave, which is very unique. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's situated on a river, and the river is incredibly blue. And there's also a cave next to it that you can pay someone to take you into a boat into the cave. And you can also pay a small fee to go into the Turkish house. But on a day like today when it's incredibly hot and there's probably not air conditioning in there, I don't think we're going to make it. The house is called Tekya, and it's a former monastery for Turkish dervishes. It was built in the 15th century and was recently restored. Well, it was fun seeing the dervish house. Uh, it was about 20 minutes away from Mostar, and parking was pretty easy to find and fairly cheap. Uh, the walk was about 10 minutes from the parking lot to the house. Um, very minimal shade, and it was very hot, so that was fun. Um, overall, we probably spent about an hour there, um, and now we're back on the road and off to find something new. Going to foreign grocery stores is one of my favorite things about traveling, so let's check this one out. No shortage of yogurt. Yep, plenty of yogurt. Ooh, Nutella. Various types. What's your favorite beverage here? Mm. Is it Cocta? A lot of chip options. Yes. How are you going to choose? I don't know. Do you have your eyes set on anything? I think so. All right, go for it. You'll have to stay tuned. You'll have to stay tuned for our next Chips and Trips to find out what we picked. Ooh, I think we have to get this, right? Chivapi, <laughs> right? Sure. Chivapi seasoning. That's got to be good. Well, I'm a happy camper. <laughs> it's one of my favorite things to do, and we got quite the haul. We're back from the grocery store at our hotel room. We've cooled off a little because it's plus 40 outside, which is intense <laughs> and we wanted to show you what we got from the grocery store so first of all we got Fanta yum we have that in the US but we wanted something refreshing and then we got Fanta tropical which we don't have in the US and we've had it before here and it we think it tastes like mango and passion fruit we don't know exactly what it tastes like like we can't read the <laughs> we can't read the ingredients, but that's our guess. It's our best guess, anyways. Paprika coated nuts. I've had chili nuts before from other countries. Never had this brand, but I assume it's similar to the things I've had before. So I'm very excited to try this. We got what we think is chivapi seasoning. Chivap chichi kind of gave it away, so. <laughs> We're gonna take this home and try and recreate chivapi at our house. We got Croatian chocolates. They were a very good price. I know we're not in Croatia right now, but these are like supposedly one of the top chocolates to get in Croatia. And they were such a good price we couldn't pass it up. And then from the refrigerated section, we got <coughs> kin uh, Kinder Pingui and Milka Choco Snack. Neither of which we've had, so we'll let you know how those are. And we also got 
candy extra. Something else we have no idea what it is, but we'll keep you posted. Obviously, we did also get uh, some chips, but you're gonna have to stick around for chips and trips to see how that goes. So let's try some of this stuff. Let's start with the Kinder Pingui. Kinda looks like a rectangular looks like an ice Swiss cream roll. Looks like an of. ice cream sandwich. Mm. So the outer layer is really kind of thin, kind of like a Swiss roll or a ho-ho. And the middle is very, very creamy and it's pretty sweet. Uh, it's got a little bit of like a cake layer maybe on the bottom or something. Something very thin. I don't even know if you can see it. <laughs> What's next? We got the milk up. Taco snack. Ooh. I bet this is gonna be about the same. <laughs> <laughs> what do you know? Looks about the same. I mean, it has waves on it. <laughs> a little bit more of a lighter milk chocolate. Mm. And it's also got kind of that thin kind of cake -y layer or something. So, pretty good. Which is better? Mmm. I kind of like the first one. What's this last one? Candy Extra. Candy Extra? That sounds very descriptive. Yeah. About as descriptive as a Snickers or a Milky Way. Mmm. <laughs> this one has more of a, like a nougat. Ooh, that's what I was hoping for. Yeah, kind of like a Milky Way without the caramel. Oh, like a Three Musketeers, huh? Mm, yeah. I'd still choose the pink wheat. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been a minute. <laughs> we took a little escape from the heat, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. It was truly 102 outside, which is insane. So we just like ran to our hotel room and hid for several hours. And now it feels significantly nicer at 95 degrees, <laughs> which is ridiculous. And so we're gonna go and do a little more exploring now that it's a little bit cooler. First order of business, we are on the hunt for the beach where you can watch people jump from the old bridge. We'll probably be sitting there waiting a long time for someone to jump. We found a pretty nice spot here on the rocks. The rocks are sharp. They're not the most comfortable no. thing. But the rocks we found are pretty okay, I guess. <laughs> We've been here, what? About 10 minutes. About 10 minutes. Absolutely no sign of anyone jumping. But there are people jumping from the platform on the other side of the river. So that's been cool to watch. like they're trying to get people to pay them money so they will jump you know we'll wait and wait and wait did you know that it's about 75 feet up it's quite the jump We did a little shopping. Yeah. Now we're gonna head towards dinner. <laughs> we're looking for a big meat plate. <laughs> we're at restaurant Tima Irma and we have the most incredible dinner in front of us. <laughs> we have what are you gonna try first? Well, well, we have got a hard cheese, yeah. a soft cheese, roasted peppers, chicken, a uh, it's like a beef patty of some sort. A beef patty, um, 
looks like we've got some sausage links right here. Yep. A full tomato, which is crazy. Um, <gasps> there's a hidden treasure trove of chivapi down here. Yeah. Another sausage or a beef patty yep. of some sort. And and even more chicken down here. But I think I know what I'm going for. <laughs> Can you guess? Chivapi. Chivapi. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna start with a bite. I'm, I'm sure you're supposed to like take it off of this platter and serve yourself, yeah. but I have no intention of doing that. I'm gonna start with a bite of plain chibabi. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. mm. mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Ooh, there's like hidden onions down here. Oh man. I'm gonna try some of this eggplant spread. Oh my gosh. Mm. I made a mess. <laughs> mm. Mm. The sausage is so, so well seasoned, well done. It's got a beautiful char and it's got kind of a crispy, crispiness to it, you know? And the eggplant spread is like not too much, not too little. The perfect amount of seasoning, it's, it's wonderful. Just building a little sandwich here. Let's see what's in it. That's on that soft cheese, the onion. Oh yeah? And beef patty of some sort. It looks incredible. <laughs> mm. It's good? Yeah. Yeah? That's the way to go. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Better than just straight up chivapi. Yeah. Yeah. The cream cheese flavor with some mm. savory onion and beef. Yeah, that that really does look incredible. I'm gonna have to get in on the action. Yeah. What have you found in there? Some kind of cheese stuff, probably lamb or beef or something. Let's see it. Just a oh, that looks really good. Uh, mm. It's really good, isn't it? Uh, oh, you're right. It's <laughs> spicy. Yep. It's got a kick to it. I wonder what's in there that's causing spice. Definitely peppers. Something. What kind of is the question? Yep, that is the question. Very good though. <laughs> There's quite the carnage on this plate yeah. here. Yeah, we made a big dent. This was incredible. If you are in Mostar, absolutely come here. We got the meat plate for two people, and it was way more than enough. Could probably feed three if you want. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely, definitely have the meat sweats now. <laughs> what do you got? I have gelato. Even after all that. We got space for that? Probably not, but we're gonna share. So <laughs> it'll it'll work out. Always, I mean, maybe there's always room for gelato. <laughs> like, can't say no to that. Yeah. You know, gelato and meat sweats, they kind of go together. <laughs> Mm, I got melon. I'm in love with this flavor. <laughs> we had a long hot day today. It was a high of 102, which is just kind of insane yeah. and very humid. So we ended up taking a lot of breaks at our hotel today to escape the heat. <laughs> and dinner was incredible today. It was, it was about 23 euros. 23 euros yeah. yeah. And we loved it. It was a great bargain, and the food just was, just was fantastic. Spectacular. Spectacular. That's a good word. And we're just gonna unwind today with a nice sunset view on the balcony of our hotel. So we'll see you next time. Yep. Well, we we're heading to our net let net. <laughs> These are pieces of the original mosque that were unable to be put back into the restoration when it was, after it was destroyed in 1953. 93. <laughs> so hot. So hot. So hot. Are you filming me struggling? <laughs> and we have come to dinner. Look at that. 
We just finished our lunch. You eat a lot of things that 10 year old you would never have eaten. Like octopus and squid. <laughs> Escargot. Onions though. You drew the line at onions back yeah. then. <laughs> you know what year this happened? No. Okay. Go for it. It was the Austro-Hungarian. Yeah. Built it, right? Yep. What, so how am I starting? They should bring this to the Minnesota State Fair. <laughs> It'd be like hot dish, hot dish pie. Hard to get on a stick though, probably. No, you could um, weave it onto a stick, I think. <laughs> <laughs> the east side of the river is a great place to see views of this, what was I trying to say? Golden Hour. We're at the hotel restaurant and we have a great view and the bread is coming. Oh, we got some baklava for, bre for dessert. For breakfast? For breakfast. I don't know what to call it. Just say that part again. Okay. What part? I'm asking you a question. <laughs> That's not how it works. <laughs>